Hey, welcome back. Um, let's continue from where we stopped. I know we may have a lot of questions. I'll just complete this chapter, and then I'll take a few questions. OK, exercising authority without abuse. Now, as pastors and leaders, we will have to exercise authority. Right? God has given us the authority to exercise the authority. Now, when we say exercise authority, doesn't mean we exercise it with, a, with abuse. That means don't use the authority that God has given you for your own personal benefits or abuse that authority. Let me give you an example. And I've seen this in places in India where pastors, they, they have people in the church and the youth come and they, you know, they're always there in the church over there. So one, one person, one of, some, one of the youth will go buy vegetables and come. Other youth, the other person will go fill petrol in the bike and come. Another one is a driver for the pastor. Now, whether they are doing it um, on their own free will, that's a different story. But don't abuse your authority. Just because God has given you authority, you know, you can't say, if, a, uh, if somebody in the church, you know, he says, uh, I have to go for an interview, have a meeting. The pastor will say, no, don't go for that interview. I need you to come for this uh, program. So you have to drive the car. What will happen now? Oh, pastor is calling. I have to drive the car. So sad, he can't drive. And we don't go for the interview. And the parents ask, how did your interview go? I didn't go. Why? Pastor said we have to drive for a conference. That is called abusing of authority. Right? And uh, our, the authority that God has given us is to edify people and not to destroy them. Abusing authority can also be, in, you know, we see this especially in towns and villages where we say, you know, you sell your land, give it to the church. Only then God will bless you. God will give you double what you have. <clears throat> sell your gold, put your gold into the church offering. Then God will give you, you know, extra, double the gold that you already have. This is called abusing authority. When it comes to giving to the Lord, when it comes to personal uh, material things or personal things of a family, we are never to interfere with that. A family, if they want to give something out of their own heart, let them give it to church. We can never say to anyone, you have to do this only, thing, only then God will bless you. No. We should never come to that place. We can teach them. The word of God says you give one-tenth of what you earn and then apart from that uh, offerings, you can give it to the church. But we can be in no place to abuse our authority and say, if only if you do this, God will. Only if you sell your house, God will bless you. Only if you sell your gold and give it to church, God will give you. Only if you listen to me, your uh, son will get married. Only if you you know, do this, uh, your daughter will uh, get a good job. No, that is called abusing authority. We should never come to that place. There is ministry. There is personal life. What happens in a person's home? We have no authority to make decisions in their home. Then they come to us for counsel. We give them counsel. But finally, the decision is theirs. We cannot interfere. If a family wants to get their daughter married at the age of 25, we shouldn't go in between and say, 25 is too late. 22, you should do. Now, that's none of our business as leaders. Right? If, the, if a family wants to send their son to another country, we cannot go and say, no, instead of spending so much money on education loan, you can give it to church. God will give him the best job. It's none of our business. Our business is to exercise authority in the right manner. Uh, then, finally, be prepared for different responses to correction. When we correct people, we will find different responses. What are some of them? There are some negative responses, right? Complaining. All of a sudden, the world becomes totally different. Now, this person, your, the pastor, was a great man of God in your eyes. And suddenly, he told you, hey, what you did was wrong. Everything changes. Who are you to tell me? The world has changed. Everything has changed about him. And they begin to complain about the pastor. Or they begin to complain about the leaders, complain about the smallest things in the church. Right? Now, we cannot 
control this right they, there are times when people will uh, begin to complain over every small thing to withdrawal sometimes people will say okay i don't want to be in this church i want to go i don't want to talk to anybody that's a second response third response retaliation right the individual begins to blame you for their problems disappointments and dis dissatisfaction and all of a sudden that respect and honor they had for you is a thing of the past you were driving the pastor around for the past 5 years suddenly one day he told you you asked him can i become a youth leader and start uh, youth ministry within the church he said no you are not good to be you are not ready to be a youth leader and now we have got upset we start retaliating oh no huh? five years like a driver i was driving you everywhere around huh? and now you're saying that i'm not ready for youth ministry youth pastor whatever and they begin to retaliate and the same honor and respect now you say can you take me there you go by bus right so retaliation could be one on a, one area one negative response as well finally departure the individual individual suddenly disappears and vanishes without prior notification and most of them do this but of course there are other responses also but maybe some of them who don't want to you know they avoid discussions they don't want to discuss they don't want to think waste time they just move out vanish away disappear they don't come back to the church these are responses that we will have some of it we can control some of it we cannot control now if a person disappears we can you know maybe call try hey what happened i haven't seen you in church or we will keep calling he doesn't pick the call we can't help it we just have to move on but there are some areas when there is complaining we need to make sure that you know we we correct them we say see i corrected you for your good i heard that you are complaining we need to solve this we don't want this happening within the church so it can go it can become a very ugly ongoing thing but as leaders we have to deal with it there are times we have sat on a call with you know people and the call is of one hour two hours call right? there's some something that you know that happened maybe a complaining thing uh, or a withdrawal from church and we had to sit thankfully everything was resolved after that right uh, what we should do in such situations do not take it personal if if somebody corrects me and i don't take it in the right way and i know and, and i see and i say it's hey you are wrong not me then it is my inability to grow as a leader so the other person he can just move on with his life but i'm stuck here not willing to take feedback not willing to improve to take no offense guard your heart very important take no offense and at a young age i decided in some places in my heart i'll make it stone cold hard people will say oh beautiful worship angels are coming and going some were sitting next to me good it doesn't affect me oh what a worship what a what a sermon very you no know, as you were preaching i saw jacob's ladder going up to heaven and the same thing i saw i saw the gold dust was falling down good for you it's not going to affect me it's not going to change anything on certain areas i've i've become very rigid and i because i don't want i'm guarding my heart right because after 3 months that same person can come and say you know forget about gold dust what you spoke was full of dust not gold dust the same person is saying that now then i have then i say you, you said gold dust no no pastor now you become dust but my heart is guarded here it doesn't matter whether it's gold dust or dust i know what i am and i know i'm serving the lord in the right way right um, and 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 so we must be not take offense guard your heart right people may say you are too short you are too tall your words are too big we don't understand what you're saying we are uh, you know everything many people say many things guard your heart that's it don't take it 
personally and people correct you give time for people to change people need time to change uh and people need time to come to terms with things and to be dealt with now especially within the church when you bring correction to people don't expect them you know to change immediately if they do it's good but sometimes people need time to change right if if there's a person who was you know a leader think of this a leader is always talking whatever comes to his mouth he'll talk like peter before thinking he spoke remember apostle peter he'll first speak and, oh why did i call him he'll first speak and then he starts thinking normally we should think and then speak but imagine a leader who's who just says whatever he feels like and then as a as a senior leader i go to him and say listen see you're a very good leader but what i've noticed is when we go out to play football when we are times away from church you are all continuously talking something sometimes the, the what you're talking is doesn't make sense you know sometimes it's it's just some random words which doesn't even make sense now remember we are a leader people are watching you they are watching the words that you're speaking right so learn to control yourself now the next meeting you go you are a meeting in a restaurant for lunch don't expect him to change he needs time because all of his life he's talking so he's used to that he needs time to learn to control himself and to speak when needed and not to speak when it's not needed right you get what i'm saying right you so you give people time to change if i say okay uh you know bless you you're leading the worship these are things you do and i and tomorrow's tuesday i say bless you lead the worship tomorrow now, i don't expect him to learn uh, to do all the things i told him today and after tomorrow after supernatural i can't go tell bless you see i told you no these are the things you do why you didn't do no i need to give him at least three four time four months five months six months and then he begins to apply it learn it and then slowly he begins to understand okay and then he learns right so i'm just giving the exam one example right but there can be many other things so give time for people to change allow them to move on in peace there will be times people will come and say i don't want to be part of your church and i have to move on i don't want to be part of this church i'm just not happy here don't hold on to people and say please be with me please be here no i love people to move on let them move on in peace now, there are many over the over the years there are many people who have moved on right not only from bangalore from um uh, they've gone to other of course other states but people have moved on from one church to another it's okay just let them move on peacefully they may have friends in the church they may like that fellowship remember every church has a different essence every church has a different calling right so some people may like that other church because there's you know 500 youth some people may like the other church because there's 100 youth and i want 100 100 youth is good not 500 but another person may want 500 youth one person may like hymns one person may like contemporary songs some of them may like a small church some of them don't want a church more than 200 people they like that fellowship so there will be many reasons it will be good to get to know the reason if because if there are some places where we have to improve in a church as a church we can apply it but if not let people move on peacefully don't hold on to grudges hold on yes you i i invested in your life for the past 5 years now you learned everything here and now you're going to the other church and uh, whatever you learned here you're you're putting it into effect in that church now that church is growing it's okay what is that church it's part of god's kingdom only no our reward is from who from god let's move on right so we must develop that ability correct in a timely manner do not procrastinate now for example uh you know i say one of you okay uh, vimal is going you preach vimal preaches and i say tomorrow vimal you preach a uh, 30 minute sermon vimal preaches 
and then I f we finished the sermon, everything. And after two weeks, I called Vimal and I said, Vimal, remember two weeks back you preached? I will say, two weeks back, what did I preach? Uh, yes, Pastor, I preached. Yeah. Uh, see, this is the feedback I'm giving you. Now, it's okay to do that. But what would be more effective is Vimal preached. Then I would say, maybe uh, a couple of hours after the preaching, I'd go tell him, okay, Vimal, this is, you did a good job. Here are the feed. This is your feedback, or maybe just the next day I can just email him and say, "This is what you did when you preached. Good job. These are this is some feedback from what you preached. So you're giving correction in a timely manner. You're not waiting for a problem, or if it's a problem, you don't wait for the problem to become big and then try to solve the problem. If a problem is small, solve the problem, move on." Right? Don't procrastinate. Okay. Questions. Go ahead. Who, whoever has questions can ask. Pastor, uh, people used to come to church, and uh, they used to give things and money for that. Pastor will announce their name in public. Yeah. So I would say that is wrong, because that is favoritism. Right, your uh, uh, it's like you're you're putting that person up, and if I was in that congregation, I would feel bad because uh, hey, because uh, maybe I gave in spiritually for the past twenty years in the church. Pastor has never said anything. I was the one who opened the shed, put the chairs when you were fifty people. Now you become five hundred people, and you've forgotten me just because I can't give gold and money to the church. But I was there with you from the beginning. Now I may feel bad. This person is just two years in the church. He's well off. He gave the money. So, he, so as leaders, we should be very careful to, you know, even when people give, just say, uh, you know, this is something that we are, you know, we are praying for a new hall or for a new speakers. The church has provided. Somebody from the church has provided. And we thank God for God's providence. So we are always the focus is on Jesus. And what God did, not on the person. See, when a person is giving, you appreciate them. Right? You say, thank you. But on Sunday morning, it's a church service. What I can say is, I inform the church. So we were praying for speakers for the past three months. One of them from church has come and come forward and blessed us. We want to thank the Lord. So I'm not telling the name. Right? Now, he may go and tell everyone, you know, if he's immature, he'll go and tell everyone, I only gave the money. That's a sign of immaturity. But that's okay. Right? If he has to tell. But you as a leader, you have protected your flock. Right? As a leader, you have said, we were praying as a church. God used somebody. We got the funds. Praise God. So we're not looking. We're not lifting up people. And that's something that we do in APC as well. You may have, we may have, we have many pastors. We all preach, right? We all teach. We have all different styles of teaching, preaching, right? And some will be really good. Now, it's not about the person. We don't say this person preached. So, it's, no, we are always, we always look at it as service to God. We're all serving God together to build God's kingdom, right? Any, any other question? Uh, it's about like uh, writing everything in uh, mm. document, Pastor. Like uh, in uh, means in our places, like it's I won't tell it's village, but even in normal churches, we have uh, like people will give, for example, we are keeping any crusades or meetings, they'll give like 10,000, 20,000. Yeah. They won't tell any proper, uh, proper thing like which we should keep that money but mm -hmm. they'll give just okay use it for ministry or use it for that meetings yeah. so uh, after giving like mm, in everything they'll come and they'll deal with it for example like after meetings everyone having dinner they'll they should have separate seat or they should get a more food so mm -hmm. like that many things are happening mm -hmm. or uh, when it comes to any church decoration or the thing what they told they that only we should do 
because we gave money like that some people they'll behave how we should deal with them yeah so that is the responsibility of a leader what you should do is you should tell them see what you're giving is for god's kingdom but what you we will let you know whatever you so for example they give you 20000 for a conference uh, you can you know as accountability what you can do is you can say okay 5000 went for food we ordered food three whatever we have 3000 for tea uh, travel um, you know stage lighting sound system and the, this is what we used your 20000 for right now do you, now you let him know this is what now if he says you know i want a separate seat separate uh, uh, you know place to eat say no you know why you're saying no because what you're doing is you're setting an example you're going to tell him see what you gave you gave for god's kingdom so as a leader i have to do what is right for the ministry ministry is the focus the church is the focus not the person see we must make them understand that when you're giving you're not giving to the person you're giving to the church that's why we must be able to teach that in the church right so now many people give into a church they're not giving to a person you're not giving to the pastor the individual you're giving it to the church and you're also giving an account of what the amount is right what how you spent it you're giving him an account but he has no right he or she has no right to come and say uh, i want to do the starting prayer i want to uh, you know uh, you should announce my name i want to be in the banner no just say no see that something is different what you gave you gave for the ministry we will use it for the ministry if you are somebody who's equipped enough if i feel that you can start do one starting prayer i'll give you but if i don't feel it i will not give you very simple right money doesn't dictate ministry right so that's why you and i should be very firm we should be stand we say no there will be people who will give god will put it in their heart now people give for different reasons one they really love the lord they want to give two they have a heart to give you know they have money they want to give thirdly people want to give for recognition or sometimes people want to give so that the pastor will uh, you know recognize them and give them a higher place no that's why you take a stand and say no 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 we are all equal you give 1 lakh you give 1000 both of you are the same yeah even pa- about pastors also like the pastors love the families who they'll give more money mm. only so when it's coming to ministry even i saw many pastors even my own church also like the family who gives more money they'll have more uh, mm. importance or more yeah so how we can change that about pastors yeah so i think see this is mostly prevalent in towns and villages right because we must understand that they are they survive on that whatever offering that is given but i think one thing that we must teach our pastors and leaders is that the bible says that uh my help comes from the lord i will lift up my eyes unto the hills where does my help come my help comes from the lord the maker of heaven and earth god will set people in place to bless you not just because a family is giving and another family doesn't give now i shouldn't be a person who goes to their house every week because i know they'll give money the moment i do that it is reward is zero the moment i appreciate or i spend more time with you because you give money and then there's another family going through hundreds of problems they don't give money but i don't go there then what have i done i have shown favoritism and yeah and partiality and what has happened is My, there is no, there's not going to be any reward but when we change our mind and our thinking as pastors that hey god will provide for us god is a supernatural god he said ask and i will give to you seek you will find so if i ask he'll give am i going through difficulty yes i don't know when i'll get the next amount to pay my children's fees i don't know that's normally the problem in you know villages and towns right how will i pay the fees for my children and there's a 
you know, there's worry, there's weariness, there's fear. All of that is natural. Or oh, when will I, how will I provide for food well, on the table? Don't worry. Right? You, you, when you do ministry the right way, God will send the money. God will send the people, God will send the money. So I think it's very important to teach. And that's why we go to uh, places in North India, in uh, towns and villages. We teach about kingdom builders. Right? We teach about giving God's guidance, um, the Holy Spirit. Why do we teach them? We tell them, see, it's different in a city, but it's the same God in the village and the town as well. right? I know of many pastors in villages who are very faithful. right? They never ask people for... I know one pastor. Personally, I know him. Uh, he never asked for money. There were times I've gone there. He says, uh, no, I don't have money for food. But he never asked for He doesn't even announce in the church. I say, you. He says, I, no, I'll keep a box if people want to give. He's got like this attitude. I'm not going to ask people for money. Good attitude. I'll keep a box. If people want to give, you give. And I used to tell him, we were uh, 10 years back. I used to tell him, hey, you can announce. No. Those who want to give. No, no, no. They see the box. No. If they want to give, let them give. If they don't give, I'm not going to ask people. He was that attitude. Do you know that you know he kept on that way? He trusted God very prayerfully. Somebody in the church had uh, you know, somebody had they, they were uh, there was a couple, I think, that came from the US uh, and they wanted a translator from I think it was Telugu to English, English to Telugu. So this guy was good in English. So what happened was they, the, some of the pastors said, we know somebody who's good in English, uh, so he can translate for you. So they called him. Now he went, he didn't ask how much you'll pay me, how much, oh, nothing. He said, I'm ready to come. Three days conference, I'll come and translate, no problem. So these foreigners came. They did conference, everything. They finished. And they went also. He didn't have never asked them for money. He came back, continued what he was doing. The other pastor was asking how much they paid you. He said, no, I didn't ask. They didn't give. But God spoke to that couple and said, this is what he needs. So they called him and said, search for a land there. We want to buy a land. So he said, OK, what kind of land? He did all that survey. Uh, he said, see, there's a two acres land here if you want to uh, do whatever you want. When next time when you come, you can. They came, they bought the land, two acres, gifted it to him. And now he's got two acres. He doesn't have money to build it. <laughs> but he's got two acres land. Then they said, you get your passport done. Every year we have a conference in the US. There, when you come, you talk about your ministry in India, in the villages, and all. Then there will be people who will want to support you. They can support you. Every year once, that is. This guy doesn't even know what is a passport. He's from a proper village. So I told him, see, you first have to go get your identity cards done. Then you have to go to the, there's a, there will be a passport office. You find out, fill in the form. There's a certain amount you have to pay. You'll get a passport. You send that passport to them. They will do the work. He did all of that. He didn't even have money to make the passport. You know, we helped him out to, uh, you know, funded him to make that passport. And right after that, he went to the US. You know, and now he goes every year and he comes. Now, not about money, but you see how God. So it's not necessary that I need to keep looking for people who have God wants to provide, He will provide, whether it's village or so. Even now. In his two acres, there's nothing. He, live, he leaves goats there. They come and eat the grass. Say, no, God will provide to build. He gave, no. To it. I don't have the money to build. God will provide. And that's a good attitude. So I think we must teach them that. Biju has another question. What is the protocol to be followed if someone wants to switch over to the church, conduct a farewell meeting for him, or go to their home and have a blessing prayer or anything? OK, I'll, I'll share what we do at APC. Right? In APC, we have something called as membership. And every five years, that membership is renewed. Now, if somebody in church says they want to be part of another church, what we do is they either come and meet with the senior pastor 
and the associate pastors together and you know we discuss what is the reason for you to leave the church now why do we ask that firstly it could be because one it could be simple reasons some person may say no it's too far away i don't want to travel 15 kilometers so it's, i can't come another person may say i'm looking for a church with evening service because morning i'm working nothing against the church nothing against the people another person may say no i'm not comfortable here i want to go to a smaller church so what we do is we sit with him we discuss and if it's something to do with us if it's possible we'll try and see if it's you know uh, something that's doable right now for example they say somebody says no evening there's no evening service now we know that we can't start an evening service for right now because we have services all across and the pastors need rest they can't just be going everywhere and so the protocol that we have is we just discuss and uh, we talk to the pastors and then we pray for them we bless them and send them so there's no farewell meeting and all of that right we just meet them uh, we bless them and release them that's it right okay any other question andrew go ahead pastor good morning good morning uh, my my question is like uh, if something happens between uh, you know the church members they are close to each other mm. and uh, they were good friends and something happens between them mm. and later one person like person a is very close to pastor he has maintained a lot of relationship but person b is not so much close mm. but after the, uh, the breaking of their uh, relationship the person b, uh, b comes to a conclusion that okay pastor is very close to person a Mm. So they came to the conclusion that okay, I have to leave the church. The pastor is not good. So how to handle those situations, Pastor? Yeah, that's a very good question. So Andrew, I think in this kind of situation, as a pastor, you must meet both of them together and try to solve the problem together. Right now, even before you start off, you can inform them that see whatever decision i'm taking i'm going to be very i'm not going to be biased meaning i'm i'm going to be true i'm going to treat both of you the same so we let them know right so here's the thing andrew people may have many things in their mind until we tell them they will not understand they may not understand so what i would do in this kind of situation is i would call person a person b I would, i'll meet both of them i'll say you know come and then i will try to see what the problem is try to resolve the matter as much as possible now if the matter is not is gone beyond that point of resolving and person b says no i still want to go from the church first thing i would say is see whatever decision i'm going to make regarding this problem it's going to be an impartial decision just because I know person A for 10 years and I know you for person B for one year doesn't mean I'm going to support the person person A. So I think Andrew, what I would do is I would tell that I would tell them this and then I will make the decision. I'll, I'll tell them, you know, so the result of this A and B, uh, you know, you were wrong or you were wrong, but let's look to just make things right. So uh, as long as I'm able to tell them, then that's good. Pastor, one more question. Yeah. Like when people leave the church and they go outside, mm -hmm. so uh, they don't give the reason why they left, but simply they start to blame on pastors and the leaders of the church. So mm -hmm. should we confront them like when they leave the church and go, or should we leave like God will take care of it? Something like that. OK, I, I, I would say this, right? Now, if they are gossiping and complaining about the pastor to my church members, right? So, for example, this person has left the church, but they are gossiping and complaining and talking bad to my church, to our church members. Then it's affecting our, my, my congregation. So I'll have to call him and I'll tell him, see, I know you may not be happy with what's happening. You may be upset with me, but... I want you to stop 
talking to our church congregation members. Leave them alone. Leave them. Don't talk to them. But if it's something that they are just talking to random people, talking to others, you know, talking behind my back, behind my back, and you know, just talking to other people, it's not affecting the church in any way. I will let it go. I'll not. I'll not bother about it. Thank you, Pastor. That yeah. Pastor, is this not the right approach that, you know, uh, this is not my church, this is the Lord's church, this is not my ministry, it is His ministry. So those who are coming and those who are going, let them do as they would want to do. And just like the way people are coming and going, God will still keep bringing people. It's my duty only to keep preaching His word and then lifting His name high, and He will draw people close. Rather than me trying to, you know, figure out, okay, a few of them are going, why are they going, or, you know, me losing sleep or peace of mind for that. Uh, yeah, so... See, that's the that's something that you know. Okay, we this is kingdom builders. We are building God's kingdom. But as a shepherd, as a as a shepherd of the church, I must be responsible for my sheep. So, for example, if somebody comes and says comes into my church and causes you know strife and uh, division, I'll handle it. The same way, if people are leaving from the church, I need to know the reason because I could be wrong somewhere. I could be wrong somewhere. So maybe I said something in the in the on the pulpit that this person uh, felt bad, right? Or for example, you know, I remember this one couple. They didn't come to church for many years. You know why? The sound was very loud. Then I called them and asked them, hey, "Why why aren't you coming to church, Pastor? We really like the message, but the worship time is very loud, and we are a little old." So I'm not able to handle that 40 minutes of worship time is very difficult for us because the sound is very loud. After worship stops, we are uh, we feel kind of peace. Then I realized, is it very loud? Then I, you know, I just checked it, uh, checked it on the sound uh, thing and all, and we realized for that hall we were very loud. So then I, I said, okay, we'll reduce the volume. We shouldn't be in a place where. Uh, you know, it's causing effect to other people. So that there, I was as a sound team. We were like this, you know, pushing everything up, right? And it was a small hall, as big as this. And we had a drum kit, not an electronic drum kit, like a proper drum kit. So every time you hit those cymbals, it's making a loud sound. But for me, it's nice. But for them, it was not nice. So I think it's important for me to know what it is. Now, if that feedback is, if the reason for their leaving is something that I can work on, I'll do it. And this couple came back, right? The moment we, uh, but if it's something that that is not beneficial for the church, it's not something that I should change, and I don't see any um, anything that needs to be changed, then I can just let it go. Yeah, ignore it, right? So, for example, a person can come and say, a person can come and say. Instead of 45 minutes worship, do 30 minutes worship. Now I'll say no. No, I want to do that 45 minutes worship. Or a person may come and say, instead of 10 a.m. service, do a 8, 8 a.m. service. Now I can think about it. I'll think about it, but I need time. Because I need to ask the congregation, see, we are planning to start an 8 a.m. service. What do you think? Now there may be people who like the 8 a.m. service because they can finish, they can go back home early. I personally like the 8 a.m. service. Finish, go back home, you have the whole day with you. So again, if it's feedback or something that I can do, I will try to do it. If it's something that I cannot do, I can tell them, see, this is what it is. I personally face the same challenge. Now, for example, we've all grown up in traditional churches. So mom and dad they prefer uh, CSI or Methodist, something which is like melodious and hymnal and things. Mm -hmm. So when they come to a church, like uh, example, let's say Bethel AG or uh, All People Church and things, in the praise and uh, worship, they feel the speakers, the yeah. same issues there. Yeah. Yeah. So then when I try to tell them, they say like, you are not able to understand us. Yeah. That, you know, so there, how will you bridge the gap? So there you have youth on one side who yeah. want the praise and worship and thing. It's like yeah. uh, uh, really uplifting. Yeah. And on the other side, you have people who feel not the time issue, yeah. the sound issue. Yeah. So see, in this scenario, what happened was the church and yeah, in this scenario, uh, the one which I was talking about, it was a small church, Mangalore church, very small. Um, see, there was no recording. And there was no audio recording, no video recording. So we could push it down. Right? 
uh, and I was able to tell the youth. I told the youth. See, we were about maybe 25, 30 youths. So I told them, see, the older folks are finding it a little difficult because it's very loud. Is it OK? We just reduce the volume. But we'll be audible. Everyone can hear. They were fine with it. But now, if the church has come to a place where there's recording, audio, video, live streaming is happening. Now, I, I'm, a, I'm assuming that the church will be at least 100 or 150. Nowadays, even the smaller churches have recording. But then, uh, but for me to serve even the people online, I must make sure that I have a good volume control set. I need to make sure that there's certain you know level decibel levels that, yeah. So I can tell them, see, I understand it's loud for you. But the thing is, we have a good online audience. We have about maybe 50, 100 people watching online. So for them to hear the worship, we have to do this. But we can try and reduce it. Don't assure them. Just let them know that we will try. We'll try to do our part. We'll talk to the sound guys and see what can be done. But there's no assurance. Uh, but if there is no recording, no audio recording, we, no live streaming, then I think it would be good to just be, you know, um, yeah. First, in my place, there is a one big problem in Uttarakhand. First problem is casteism. Mm -hmm. Like, if you go there, first thing they will ask your name and then caste. And in churches also, like many churches are going there, but because of casteism, people used to say like low low caste people used to go to church and because of that also my family suffered a lot and uh, they separated us but by god's grace now everything got fine very nicely but the thing is like if i want to start something in my place in uttarkashi so if i go there and i want to start like i need a room and something and if i tell them like uh we used to do sunday prayer and if we tell about jesus they like they will get angry and they can do anything so this is the very big reason in uttarkashi not all uttarakhand but in my place gangotri uh, before that is uttarkashi city is there so there is no churches right now also there is no single churches people are doing the work of god there but they are doing very like uh, afraidingly and fear is there and they can't do openly work of God there is that because of persecution there persecution is like you can't go there and you can't even speak the name of Jesus there mm -hmm. that much thing is there yeah and they will uh, give you room and all if you tell like I'm from Brahman background oh. I'm Rajput and all they will provide everything but if you tell like uh we want to do sunday service and all so one of my brother went there to start ministry but he came back mm -hmm. many people went there but they came back yeah yeah so uh, we we learned in this that see the real battle for souls is a spiritual battle right now especially places like this where you can't be open right now just for a room i cannot say okay i am brahmin right it's a lie right so I, I i don't want to say i'm a brahmin just because i want a room but what i will do is i will be very clear i will say see i'm a christian and i've come here you know i may be working but i also want to serve god i may be sharing the gospel now they may say no so you leave it come away but don't make up something and say you know uh, just for a room and just no now god understands right the places he understands the what is happening around the world he understands so if there is there is no opportunity right now the most we can do is pray for these places say god you open a door god is able able to open a door because if you look at church history china was a communist country but people went into china god opened doors for them to you know start churches start ministries bibles went in god opened that door but you and i right now we must also understand the times and seasons we are living in god is powerful god is 
God can do great things. He's building his church, but God has also given us wisdom. Right? So I would say, wait. Ask God to open the right door and, and give us a right leading. And only then you step into it. If not, continue to do what you are doing, right? whatever ministry, whatever you're doing. You may have a burden for that place. Keep stirring up that burden. Pray for God to open a door. God can supernaturally open a door. But we need to wait. Right? Don't just take up things in your own hands because it can cause, it can become a big problem later on. Right? Okay, Abhishek asks, uh, in a town, village, church, there are families who have a good influence on the new members and families from their areas in such case, Pastor. When the main family or member creates any kind of problem, it's hard to ask them to leave because if they, if they won't, won't come from the area, other families will also not come. Uh, Abhishek, I, I, I'm not sure if I understood your question right but i think what you're saying is there are families who come to church and if they don't come the other families along with them won't come is that what your question is okay so i think as a leader what we must do is we must teach the church telling them see it's not about what we're doing as a church is not about people we are coming not only for the fellowship which is important, but we're coming to grow spiritually in our spiritual walk with God. So just because another family doesn't come, doesn't mean I should not come. So maybe all of these places, right, especially like, you know, see, most of these things happen in towns and villages, because why does it happen? Lack of, no, lack of teaching. And I believe that if we as pastors teach our church members, teach our congregations the right way, they will understand. Now, just because one family doesn't come, they are an influential family. And if they don't come, and then the rest, three, four other families don't come. Now, it's not the pastor's problem. He didn't do anything wrong. Um, and it's sad when these things happen. But the other family is doing something wrong, right? But just telling the other families, don't come to this church. Uh, sometimes, Abhishek, we can't do anything about it. All we can do is teach. The Bible says they shall know the truth. The truth will set them free. So keep teaching the word of God. Keep focusing on God's word. Keep ministering on God's word. The word will speak to them and bring change in their heart. If it doesn't happen to them, it's all right. We'll have to move on. No matter what the hurt is, we'll have to move on. So, right? Uh, all right, so we'll stop here. Uh, uh, also, for the next course, uh, that is uh, the ministry of the evangelist, pastor, and teacher, I just uh, couldn't really prepare the points. So just take some time to study. Uh, I just need one more hour for that uh, uh, for that one chapter that we want to do. Um, so I'll just give me some time. I have a few things happening. So uh, we'll not meet now, but we'll meet next class. Then we'll try and come. Whenever we have the next class, we'll meet and we'll try and complete that night. Right. Take this time to just study and uh, learn together. Thank you. God bless you all. Have a great week ahead.